Good evening and welcome everyone again um, to this IOSH webinar. The webinar this evening is in collaboration with IOSH Scotland, the IOSH Rural Industries Group, the IOSH Irish Rural Industries Group and the Northern Ireland branch. My name is Tina Morgan and I'm going to be chairing your session for you this evening. We've seen the housekeeping rules already, so I would like to just encourage everyone to use the chat and the Q&A function. There will be Q&A towards the end of the session. But first of all, we're go we've got a great talk for you lined up this evening. As we all know, the responsibilities for the provision of safe vehicles, machinery and agricultural, uh, sorry, agricultural trailers even, are uh, legally required under the pure regulations in the UK and under the EU occupational safety and health legislation in Ireland. This evening's webinar is entitled Head to Toe, Agriculture Safety and the Tilly Pass. And our special guest speaker for this evening is Jane Gurney. Jane's a passionate professional and founder of Tilly Pass, which is run by farmers for farmers on their campaign, Tilly Your Trailer. Jane is going to share with us a very personal story, which will help you to help to demonstrate why health and safety should always be kept dear to our hearts. So I'm not gonna hold the session up any longer and I'm going to say it's over to you, Jane. And if you could share your session, share your screen with us now, and we can look forward to hearing your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And um, thank you for inviting me to speak to you this evening. We are very excited. Um, so I'm going to start with my slides and I hope we're not going to have any failings here because um, it's a different computer to what I'm used to. So do bear with me if we go a little bit slower. So as I said, my name's Jane Gurney and I farm with my family on the Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire borders. And we have done for about six generations. So we're very involved with farming and I'm going to tell you the story of how we set up the Tilly and, and how it came about. So this is a picture um, that I'm going to start to share with you. And this is the start of our story. This is a picture of Harry, um, my middle child. So the middle of five children who was tragically killed when he was 19 in 2014. He was doing a harvest job for a Cambridgeshire farmer um, during the summer and the trailer he was towing had only been serviced uh, two weeks prior to the incident. And unfortunately, uh, it was the third trailer that he, he'd been given. He'd rejected actually the first trailer because the wheel bearings he felt were a problem. And the second trailer, they exchanged because it was leaking oilseed rape. And on the return trip, he never made. They wanted him to transport that. But tragically, Harry lost control of the trailer on a downward hill. And he was, um, the impact of the trailer hit the top of the car cab of the tractor. And he died later in hospital. And the company were fined and prosecuted, firstly by Cambridgeshire Police and then by the HSE. And they were fined um, for two breaches and the incident, of course, in Harry's death through lack of um, lack, lack of care and maintenance of their machinery, a number of other, other issues. So we decided when we got to the court case after three and a half years that we'd do something about this. And as a family, we, we gave it some thought and we decided that we would set up uh, a, a campaign. And we decided that we wouldn't name it after Harry as we felt that was quite difficult. So we chose Harry's dog, Tilly. So she became our mascot and that's how Tilly Your Trailer was born. So you can see there's our logo with Tilly's, Tilly's smiling face in the middle of it. So the Tilly comes in two parts. You have your trailer inspected on the farm. You get a certificate which is shown on the back of the trailer, which we'll come to in a moment. But this is the worksheet, the maintenance inspection. And this is quite a general looking sheet. It shows an 18 point profile. Do you have to pass all 18 of the points in order to receive a Tilly pass? And on the sheet, we get to record the name of the farmer, the address of where the trailer lives, the make of the trailer, the chassis number, the Tilly number, and all of the details of the mechanic 
and the company that they work for if they're independent their own name obviously and their dealership all of this is recorded in triplicate top copy goes to the farmer second copy comes to the dealership and the third copy which is most important comes back by post to us so we actually get to hold in our hand the sheet that's been with the trailer the trailer sheet gets booked in the tilly pass is recorded as having completed its journey we know where that trailer is, where the number is, and we can also um, hold that copy. So if there's any detrimental um, concerns regarding a trailer that isn't the correct trailer or there's been a swapping of certificates or any, any tampering with the paperwork, we've got an isolated sheet. So this is the Tilly Pass. And as you can see, it's red and white and quite bright. So we had this designed for us by the young farmers which is quite exciting. So they went for the bubble writing and we, we, we've we stuck with it. We rather like this. And this is Tilly number one, very importantly went out onto a Bedfordshire farm and is carried on a young farmer's trailer. And every year they have the number one certificate printed up for them. So in 2018, at the end of the court case, we thought we would pilot this scheme. So we put together, as you saw the sheet and the certificates, and we approached 100 trailers from friends and farming neighbours and so forth in Bedfordshire and said, would you like to take part? We had two big dealerships that said that they would go in and do the servicing and they were true to their word. And instead of running 100 trailers, we ended up Tilly in 1000 trailers in a very short period of time. It was about five months and slowly but surely the Tilly started to grow or probably quite fast actually. <laughs> And then uh, at the beginning of 2019, we introduced the Tilly Trailer Pass. So this is a Union Jack, as you can see, and it goes on the back of every new trailer that goes out of an authorised dealership. So if you're selling a trailer, it's really an important addition. Um, the idea behind this wasn't actually ours initially. It was a couple of the trailer manufacturers. They felt that we should register these trailers at the start of their working life. So again, we record the details on the same sheet and we register them at point of pre-delivery inspection. So when they're set up for the farmer, they have their PDI inspection, they receive the Tilly Pass on the back and then they're recalled 12 months later. And at that point they're stripped down and they have a full inspection. This is this year's Tilly, which is blue and white. So they will see some red and white still running out there that will come to the end of their their year by the end of this year. And this one again will be replaced next year and we're going to be seeing green. So that's something we're just about, just about to start sending out to the dealerships. And you can see from this that we've started to spread far and wide. Uh, we've um, just started to spread into Ireland, particularly busy um, throughout the UK. As you can see, we've got um, a rather overcrowded. This is just a screenshot of our map from our website. So it isn't ideal. There are some spaces um, that aren't, aren't probably noticed in this map, but I think it's quite, quite an important to see. The idea is that you can log on to the website, you can find someone who's near to you, or you can contact us and we'll, we'll locate someone. They come onto the farm and they do your Tilly inspection. We very quickly realised taking part in the court case or being part of the court case that there were more than one, there was more than one fatality a year. And we were really, really concerned that this shouldn't continue to happen. In the year that Harry was killed, there was at least one other young farmer and a three year old child that was killed from trailer fatalities. And we didn't think it was acceptable. It's an incredibly difficult thing to live with and to think that you're going to have to live with the negativity of someone else's actions is quite profound. So setting the Tilly up has moved us forward um, to be able to be proactive with it. Um, so when we come to this picture, now you can see on this picture, for those who aren't familiar with it, there's, there, there's a trailer there that has its wheel removed and you can see exposed the brake linings, the springs and the hub. Now by the look of this trailer, you can see it's Two things, it's quite new, or it looks to be quite new, and it's also filthy dirty. So you can see by the mud and the muck that's hanging on it that this trailer works hard in general conditions that you'd find on, on any farm. 
Now, the issue with this is that the dirt and the filth obviously gets into the wheels. It gets in between the linings and the drums and you end up with some issues that are caused with the braking efficiency and um, a number of a number of issues. And it isn't an ideal situation. So cleaning and keeping your kit clean is ideal. But also at this point, you can see we're really looking to clean, repack the bearings and to grease this. So to make sure it's serviceable, but we're checking everything. And it shouldn't be thought that something's 12 months old and it doesn't need to be inspected because we found issues um, with, with things that have gone wrong with items that have come loose at that point. Now, when we tilly something, it doesn't have to generally be an agricultural trailer over 10 and a half tonne. It can actually be um, a cattle trailer, anything typically found on a farm. And this is quite an interesting picture because it's a picture of a slurry bowser with its wheel off. So you can see how small the um, how small the linings look compared to the size of the wheel. And you can imagine that this trailer's spending quite a bit of time on the farm, but also is likely to be running on the road. So it's really, really important. So we service all of these and you can see the wheels sitting in a rocker, which we generally use to take the wheels off and to make it easier for our mechanics. So everyone who services a trailer for the Tilly is authorised. So we check everyone's qualifications and we only take on land based engineers. And at that point, we always check that they've got their public liability in order. They're going onto the farm to represent us. They're also controlled under quite a strict code of conduct, which means that if we see them breaching um, their conduct in their own private life that they put on social media, they've got young um, children on tractors, um, they're on quad bikes without helmets and so forth, they're immediately suspended and their authorization is removed. And so we don't, we, we don't take any um, prisoners with that. So health and safety across the board, not just with the trailers is something that we are very keen on. So we move, move along to the next picture. And here we have um, someone who's cleaning and lubricating, making sure that everything is working, all the moving parts. But as you can see, he hasn't yet cleaned the brake linings and you can see that there's, there's quite a little bit of work to be done. This trailer, in fact, wasn't that old. It was two years old, but it's working in very dusty conditions. And you can see all the muck that's got in into the wheels. And this is unfortunately something we see quite a lot of. And this is a set of brake linings. So across the board, you can see on the right hand side, there's chunks out of them. And the center one's obvious because it started to break away at the bottom. And then the left hand one's shiny and it's beveled. Now these were from the same trailer. And in a moment, we're going to see them in situ. Now what's happened here is that when the lining started to, to um, degrade and it's actually got in between the wheel bearing I'm sorry, excuse me, in between the wheel, uh, the lining and the brake drum, it started to rub and it started to put grooves into the lining. And then, then we're looking at the brake efficiency. These obviously were completely replaced. That's why they're taken off. But that's the condition that we found that particular lining in. So it really did. It did need some action and the rivets were removed and it was replaced. So when we're talking about removing the wheels, this is absolutely every wheel, every trailer, every year. So this is a much smaller um, drum you can see, and you can see on the top that we've got a wheel bearing. And this is a general condition that we find the wheel bearings in. So when we are removing those, we're taking them out. Now, a trailer that's involved in a fatality or that has an issue invariably has a number of things wrong with it. So it's really important that something is well maintained and it's in good working order across the board. And a combination of items can be as fatal as no brakes at all. So this is just to show that we always replace the pins and any replaceable parts at that point when we put the wheels on. This is us, um, I think this is actually taking the wheel off at this point. So again, it's sitting in a cradle and the mechanic is working to take it off. Now, when the trailer has finished its tilly or when it's finished its inspection, or all, all of the wheels are talked up, we only ever allow our qualified technicians to do the inspection. So you won't find an apprentice finishing the job off or going onto the farm. He may well go and observe 
and work alongside, but he won't be doing any of the jobs unsupervised or on his own. We would expect always that the mechanic was taking the lead with that. So when, when Harry was killed, obviously it was a really difficult, difficult time for us. And it did take three and a half years before the Tilly was launched. But as soon as it was launched, we, we started to really surge ahead and we felt that people understood the need for it. But people do fall into categories and we've got a huge amount of farmers that are now taking the tilly up and are really enthusiastic. Some, of course, are always going to be don't want to get caught out, so they'll do it. Some do it for other reasons. They feel that, you know, it is the right thing to do. But if we think and stop and think about it, most farmers are working close to their own home. So they're traveling through the village. They're actually running along the road between the village school, possibly past relations and family members. So they're very close quartered. And it's really important to get that out to them that if there is something goes wrong, it could be one of your family members either operating or on the receiving end of a trailer that's become disconnected from its tractor, for instance. We do a lot of training and these are some pictures taken of one of the trailers that we trained on just before lockdown. So late February of this of this year. And here we've got a number of mechanics working in groups. Now, all of these mechanics are fully qualified, experienced, different age groups, but very, very, very experienced. And on here, we're working through trailers, looking for faults, working together and learning and also inspecting the trailer. And this was very interesting because when we ran the training, we went to some farmers in Suffolk, which is where our trainers are based. And they ask a farmer if he would like to give a couple of trailers up because we could do it for cost price of any parts because it was for training. So very enthusiastically, we had four farmers bring eight trailers along. Now, not one of those trailers passed. Everyone failed on more than three things and one failed on 14 of the 18. Not one of them had a full set of lights working. Now we're bearing in mind they'd all been run on the road to be bought to us and they were the best the farmer had. They bought their best trailers along. So all of these trailers were doing heavy work. So just in that very short period of four days, we removed eight trailers from the road and consequently the farmer then had their other trailers tillied. And I think um, some of them are actually still being worked through now because they needed so much work. So here you can see we've got um, um, the hangers to think about. You've got all your bolts to check and you've got your bushes and so forth. Uh, and what he's doing on the back there is making sure that um, everything is freed up and nothing seized. So the brakes are working at the standard you'd expect them to when they, they leave the factory. So we can't have anything that isn't performing 100 percent. And if you fail a tilly, then you get a fail ticket and after after correction you move forward and we don't give any any um any suggestions that you can move forward with it and just just have the certificate and then get the job done there's no advisories with the tilly it's a pass or fail and this is a picture here of um, jonathan and he's what he's doing here is he's cleaning he's cleaning out the brake drum and he's having a look at the the scores and you can see here this is a typical example of what happens when you get something abrasive between the linings and the drum. And obviously with age, things are going to happen like this. This doesn't actually come off of the trailer with the, with, with the very poorly, um, with the very, very, very poorly broken up um, brake lining. Sorry, I was just thinking um, where it did come from, but you can see the heads of the bolts in here. So everything in here will be cleaned. All the bolts will be checked and the um, bearing that's in there will be re-greased and it'll be packed. And when everything's absolutely tip top, then we'll move forward at that point. All the tires will be checked and they will be looked at as well at that point. Uh, towing eyes are another big issue. We go for one third wear on a towing eye. Once it's had one third wear, then it has to be replaced. So you can imagine at the moment, we're finding a lot of replacements needed the one on the right is the one that we're retiring. You can see, you could think, well, actually it doesn't look too bad, but when you compare it with the left hand new eye, you can see it's much, much more bulbous. It's much more rounded. 
underneath they are worn flat often they'll rub on the um on a draw bar and you can see at the top how it drops away on the neck so that definitely was replaced now when we service a trailer we service a trailer looking for for a whole of 12 months so if someone is going to use it for heavy use or light use it's light or heavy use for 12 whole months we never service anything for three weeks or three days if we look at this and we think that isn't going to make the 12 months of wear then it has to come off and the same with the brake the brake linings at that point this is quite an interesting picture because it shows you a very poor towing eye and it's almost um pushed up like chocolate or fudge at the bottom because it's so worn now when we put a towing eye through a measurement we are looking to be really on the safe side and people can say very clearly a towing eye could be used for longer than that but we can't tell what you're going to hitch it to we don't know how worn your tractor hitch will be. You put a combination of a tractor hitch and a worn towing eye, you can see the gap across the top of the point of the hitch. And that is the gap that the eye could pop out of. So when you're towing behind something, you have to remember that the whole weight of the drawbar and the distribution of the load across the chassis and the axles is also only connected with the tractor at that point of that circle. So it is really, really important that we keep the combinations together. Trailer that breaks away can travel on its own journey and it will, it will end up somewhere or colliding with something or tip over. And there are a number of fatalities, as I'm sure you know, that have been caused by that. And this, this slide I'm sharing with you today, because I think it's quite a poignant one. This farmer had a tilly on his trailer and the next year he thought, well, actually, I've had a tilly, so actually I'll be fine. I'm not going to worry about it. And he stored his trailers and he uses them for a lot of heavy road use for onions. Now, he knows that he'd had a bit of a collision with a curb, quite a high curb. One of his drivers had had a bit of a near miss tip in the trailer. And um, I didn't know this, but I suggested to him that he did have a tilly or that Lee got a quote and had someone to come out. Well, he decided in the end, he rang me and said, please send someone out. I've changed your mind. I'll, I'll have them all checked again this year. And when they went out, they could see that this was cracked three quarters of the way around the axle. Now, the chap who owned this trailer was so upset that he actually sat on the ground and was in tears. He was so shocked. And he got all of his staff out to have a look at it and said how important it is that we don't think that um, something we did last year will cover us for this. So that was a good example. In this case, the trailer lives quite locally to me and I often see it pulling um, loads of onions on the road back and forth to Bedford, um, but it has got a new axle on it now, so it's passed. This is a picture I shared at the weekend on our social media and it went into actually into our training depot and they were doing some work there. And this is um, a bogey. So this is the front bogey of a of trailer that would be trailed trailed behind it it's actually for a vegetable cart so we don't generally do modified trailers or retired lorry backs but this was the front the front bogey for it and as you can see that the leaf spring the two bolt holders have moved out if you look you can see that there's a line all the way down and they've moved out so the bottom leaf is almost at the point of where it will drop out and once it drops out of course the whole of that side will collapse. Now I understand the farmer has had a problem trying to keep this trailer, this trailer on the road or this front of the trailer, the bogey on the road. Um, and it keeps trying to stir, steer in the ditch. Well, it's quite obvious why now. And this is a picture of underneath. And the reality of this is that this is running on the road in this condition, working every day. So it is quite shocking. This is a broken spring that was discovered when a trailer was stripped and you can see that that had to obviously be replaced. The trailers are really receiving some really heavy work and a really tough life. Uh, this is just shows you uh, there should be a rubber bush in there and it's completely disintegrated. And this isn't a great picture, but it shows you that even though this is in better condition and a much younger trailer, um, you can see also that the bush they're often distorted as this one is and has to be replaced. So I was going to talk to you a little bit about um, a few pictures of really nice pictures of trailers that we've been sent. 
this trailer is one of the very, very first trailers to carry a tilly. You can see it's got its red tilly on and it's working away in Bedfordshire, that trailer. We started to talk to the trailer manufacturers very early on in order to get an understanding of what they felt was important. And that was a really big thing. We went and visited them and these people are incredibly experienced. They've been running family businesses for years and years, but they were really, really pleased that somebody was taking this on and they've worked incredibly well with us. In fact, they're always suggesting to their dealerships that, that they get on board and take part in it and have a, have a proper service. So we're very pleased with that. That's uh, a Stuart from Scotland. And this is a typical example of a brand new kit going out with the Union Jack on them. I hope you can see that on the back of this Bailey. Now, the, these are being towed out in tandem empty. We wouldn't presume to encourage this to happen when they're loaded because the load would be would be too great. But you probably could get away with um, with grass on both of these trailers if if you'd got a suitable side tractor on the front. So they're just heading out in. Um, I think in Somerset to their new home. And this is a, just a, an example of a Bailey that as you can see would be over 10 years old. And this trailer here has had a service. It's just finishing off. And I wanted to touch on you, to you with this trailer. This trailer's come across from um, Southern Ireland. Now the trailers come in often, we have a lot of them in England and Scotland and Wales and all over. And they are, they are great bits of kit, but there's a lot of engineering going on across the whole United Kingdom and, and into, into Ireland. But these trailers often come without a manual. And we've got rules and regulations that differ, and you'll probably know, know some of them better than I, than I do. But as far as these trailers are concerned, when they go out with a Tilly Pass, and we always make sure that they've got a document holder and they're carrying the manual, the manuals are very often not available. Um, the farmer tends to take the manual and puts it in his office to keep it clean and, uh, and nice and neat. And the operator never gets the opportunity to look at the manual. And he doesn't actually get the opportunity to read it. So with our head to toe trailer app, the trailer manufacturers have now popped them up on there. So you can download them and print them off if you buy a secondhand trailer. This is a picture of a muck spreader. So emphasizing again, that you can have any braked towed item tillied, but the majority of what we do is um, is trailers. This is a Harry West. Harry West tilly everything straight from their factory and the whole of their hire fleet carries a certificate. This is a picture of a, a header trailer. So this will carry the header for a combine on it. And again, a braked item can carry up to four and a half tonne. And this particular farmer was very keen to have everything he had tillied. This is a picture of our two trainers, David and Marcus, working with Angus Weston from Richard Weston Trailers um, last week or 10 days ago or so in Suffolk. And um, Angus is talking to them there about load sensing valves. So as part of the Tilly, we look to test the load sensing valves. And this is something that's quite new on agricultural trailers, though it's been available on HGV for some years or a great number of years. The problem is with the load sensing valve is the trailer is doing a lot of dirty work, it's hanging down low and it is needing to be tested. So at the point of a tilly, certainly within the next month, every trailer will have its load sensing valve tested. Now load sensing valve is um, controlled by horizontal and parallel bar. When the trailer is full of grain, for instance, and has a heavy weight, the braking capacity is greater. And when it's empty, it's less. So you're not being pulled up sharp and shooting through the windscreen when, when you're empty and over braking. And this is a great step forward. It stops the farmers adjusting the trailer, um, slacking the trailer breaks off because they think that they're being pulled up too sharp. Now, when a load sensing valve is set up in the factory, it's set up to a, to a height, a set height, and it will be boxed up or it'll be on the back of probably quite a small tractor. When you get it back to the farm and you elevate the drawbar, the load sensing valve can sometimes need adjusting. And at that point, the farmer then feels tempted to fiddle again with the brakes and adjust things. Uh, so we're going in at this point. We're testing the air load that's coming between the tractor and the trailer, and then the air capacity at the back of the load sensing valve. Uh, we've been working with Wabco who make load sensing valves for about 95% of the trailers. And they've set us up with a kit that they supply just to us that our mechanics are able to use in order to, to adjust 
and to check that the load valve if the valve goes at the top you will have full braking capacity but if the valve goes at the bottom you will have no brakes so it's incredibly important moving forward as we progress with agricultural trailers that we get a really good understanding of where we're moving a trailer that a trailer is usually towed a 25 miles per hour or 20 miles per hour if it's older there is a capacity for a trailer to have commercial braking system and be towed behind a JCB or a Unimog at a greater speed. But at this point, they must have a load sense involved. So this is why there's an introduction of those starting to be seen more widely. This is just a, a nice picture of Darren Watling. He's quality control officer for Richard Westons. And he's showing us a picture here with um, two of our head to toe stickers, one each side. When we set the head to toe up, we set it up so we service a trailer and we give everyone the opportunity to view firsthand directly from the manufacturers all the trailer information and they can access a contact details. They can talk to the manufacturer, they can email them or they can contact us or, or one of one, one of our um, technicians to ask a question. You don't have to be part of the Tilly, you don't have to have a Tilly, you can use the app for free. Everyone can use it and download it on their smartphone or access it on their on on their tabletop or their desktop computer. And Darren's quite the star of a safety video for Richard Weston. So there he is smiling away and again displaying their support for the Tilly with um, one of our head to toe banners. And that was at the launch of Lama, uh, which was probably the only show we had this year. But um, lots of the trailer manufacturers, this is Bailey's displaying our banner. They're part of the head to toe as well and Larrington's trailers, uh, they are from East Anglia. And then again, Richard Weston's have got their banner up at, at the show um, and Harry West. So I'm going to leave you um, before I do the questions and or the answer the questions, hopefully, with this short video, it shows you how the app works. This video was part of the Farm Safety Week and it won fourth place this year for the fourth best app in the country. Thank you um, for that, Jane. That was great. Um, I'm sure everybody learned something new. And I always say that pictures paint a thousand words and yours absolutely did exactly that. Um, terrifying. And I think most of us who have been on farms in the past and have seen the trailers when they're absolutely covered in dust and dirt, um, just how much of an issue it is to be able to carry out a you can't even do a proper visual inspection let alone an in-depth inspection so I think that was absolutely brilliant um, and fantastic also to hear about the young farmers being on board with this and getting involved with you especially early on. Um, we've had some questions coming in on the Q&A so what I'm going to do is invite all of our panellists um, if they haven't already um, put them their videos on and unmuted themselves and what we're going to do is take some of the questions that have been coming in and I will ask the question and then if any of our panellists feel really keen about answering um, we can just give us a nod and I'll pass the, the question over to yourself. So just um, one of the comments that came in um, during your presentation came in from Jerry Buckley and um, we thought it was worthy of, of, of just pointing, um, just directing people to this comment. So what he said was driving machinery on roads should be part of road safety education. Modern tractors can move quite quickly on a road. The tyres are not designed for the roads. Um, as they are heavily grooved and they act very differently on roads when braking heavily. They tend to bounce and the trailers can then move laterally. Is that something that 
that any of our panelists would like to uh, comment on or just agree with or I'll comment if you would like me to <laughs> that'd be great thank you Jane well I understand that people do get very concerned and I um, know that things have changed quite a bit. So a young driver isn't able at 16 on a provisional just to now head out and drive a tractor. But equally so, um, it is a concern they can have, they can be driving with a bit of kit on the back that they can't drive a normal car. So as far as low profile tyres go, you're absolutely right. There are, there are some issues with those um, and a number of issues, but a trailer should not be towed faster than 25 miles per hour. Unfortunately, people think they should tow at the speed the tractor can go at, not at the speed the trailer can go at. So again, it's a part of educating people and to move forward with that um, at that point. It, it, it's almost impossible to stop people wanting to be cleverer than they should be. And it's always easy to point the finger and think that somebody was young, so they made that mistake or, or that there's other reasons, but you're absolutely right. Um, a tractor has to be able to go on and off the road and it, it's not perfectly suited to the road, that's for sure. Brilliant, thank you. Um, we've got a question here from Karen McDonnell and she said that health and safety in agriculture has been a difficult issue to tackle. How have you worked in partnership to get your message across? And I guess that one's definitely for you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as I said, we started to work very quickly with the trailer manufacturers and that, that took quite a bit of nerve to ring them up and to say, you know, this is what we want to do. How do you feel about it? Um, and they were extremely helpful. We very quickly got involved with Farm Safety Partnership for, um, well, for England and Wales. So I do sit on the Farm Safety Partnership and that's, that's something that we're very proactive with and working with the Safety Foundation, the Yellow Wellies, and we've um, been lucky enough to work with them both for their farm safety weeks. Young farmers have been um, particularly helpful. We do do a quiz. So that's when Tilly, Tilly the dog comes into our own. She goes out and um, helps us out. And she's particularly naughty. So she's, they're putting their hand up and I'm saying, you'll have to ring your bell. You can't just call out the answers. And they're saying, Jane, Tilly's in the bin in the kitchen. They're saying, <laughs> and, uh, so we've had some great entertainment from that point of view. But getting the message over to the young people is really important. And that's been something that we've achieved through. We get them to build a trailer in the middle of the, the table with bricks. When they get multiple choice questions wrong, they lose the bricks. The trailer starts to fall apart. Um, by the end of it, we have a fast five minute you know, ringing of the bell and they can answer every question at that point. They know exactly what's what, you know, they're putting their hands up and trying to beat the other teams. So just within a short period of half an hour, you can mould those young people to really understand the importance of checking. So working with all these different parties together has been, it's been really enjoyable and really rewarding. Um, I also sit on an all party trailer and towing committee, which we meet in parliament so on there are representatives from DVLA and I've had a meeting and I have a lot of communication with um, George Eustace um, uh, from DEFRA before he became um, before he became the minister for that. But he also communicates with me and comes from a farming background. So we've had a, a, a lot, a lot of interest. I think some of it is obviously because the story is so poignant for everyone with Harry. But um, mm. we like to think that people also also think that it's a really good idea the tilly no that's brilliant um i i noticed on on your map when you put it up earlier that there there are areas obviously although it, although there is a lot of work going on out there, there there are still areas that need to be expanded into and we did have um a comment that came in um from Marid um about whether you'd thought about expanding Tilly to the Republic of Ireland and I'm, I'm sure you have and perhaps also if one of our panellists um, would like to talk about any current initiatives or anything that's happening in respect of, of um, inspections in Ireland as well that would that would be great if anyone else wants to join in but Jane what's the first of all what's the um, plans in respect of the Republic of Ireland? Yes, well, um, as you can see, we've only got we've only got one outlet in Ireland, um, and they've been with us about six months. Uh, it, it it's a bit of a slow burn because it 
it's obviously something on everyone's tip of their tongue here. People are used to seeing it. They're starting to talk about it. So we would really like to move forward. And um, we'd be really delighted if, um, you know, if we if we could stretch across Ireland and, and be, be of a service that way. There's a lot of trailers coming, um, coming out of Ireland. So we know there's a great demand for agriculture. And, um, you know, we're working quite closely with Brocken and with NC. And they're both of those those um, manufacturers are very keen for us to give a joined up message um, on their home turf. So we would be really pleased. Excellent. OK, yeah. And we've got John who'd like to, to jump in on that one as well. Yep. Um, really great presentation, Jane. Uh, pictures really, really great. Uh, excellent presentation altogether. Uh, yes, uh, we have our share of uh, tragedies and serious accidents with regard to agricultural trailers uh, here in the Republic of Ireland every year. Sure, we have. And in point of fact, we've had 16 fatalities this year on that's uh, on the farm. And I think a couple of those are associated with uh, trailers, agricultural trailers and maintenance work on trailers. Yeah, uh, I mean, it would be great uh, if if we had your system or a similar system here in the Republic of Ireland for uh, checking uh, trailers. Uh, now, uh, I would I, from my impression is that the better agricultural contractors here have uh, do carry out good maintenance uh, on their trailers. They're obliged to do so uh, under health and safety legislation and also for their own insurance requirements, of course, and they would have competent people and have, would have their own maintenance facilities for, for trailers, uh, not just for, 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 for work on the farm, but also by virtue of the fact they're out on the public road uh, where, they're, where they're subject to uh, uh, stop by, uh, by the police here. And, and that does happen. We, we see on social media quite, a, quite often trailers are, are stopped and seized for, for uh, poor maintenance and overloading and so on and so forth. But other than that, I don't think there's any uh, formal regime uh, for, for, for inspecting trailers over here. And uh, yes, we, we know about uh, NC. NC are based in Northern Ireland and uh, their trailers are, are quite widespread here in this country. Um, and we have a number of other manufacturers as well uh, who export trailers, as you said. Yeah, so uh, really, really great, very, really interesting uh, presentation, Jane. Absolutely, yes. Lovely. Thank you for that. Can, that I, just was, say, uh... can I just say something quickly at that point? Absolutely. Because I made notes and I didn't use them. I hope I didn't repeat myself too much. You're never quite sure. <laughs> but I, well, I, I think I probably didn't say the, our very, very first thought with the tray, with the Tilly was putting the sticker on the back gave anyone who's walking towards that piece of kit the opportunity to have a voice because they're able to see that it's been serviced by a qualified technician. If they check the date, they do their daily checks the opportunity to ask the question, if they don't see the Tilly, they can say, can I ask? And they've still got that opportunity to walk away and to go home because your mum just wants you home for tea. She actually doesn't care whether you jack your job in or not. So walking away is a really important. So that's why we stuck the Tilly on the back to tell everyone, yeah, this trailer is has been checked. You're still responsible to look it over every day, but it gives you a really clear, good way forward. Um, and working with the NFU Mutual, which we're doing are doing quite a bit of work with at the moment, they want to spread the Tilly right throughout the whole of the UK. So that might well be a good springboard as well into um, into Ireland. Fantastic. Just on that, we have had a comment on chat. I'm not sure if you've seen it, which is from Tom Murphy, um, who is Professional Agricultural Contractors of Ireland. And he said that they would love to talk to you about this with a view to expanding it into Ireland. So I think we're making positive, um, positive connections already. So that's brilliant. Thank um, you. I've got um, a question here uh, from Alan Plom that just says, are there any, are any stats collected and collated by Tilly on defects, such as incorrectly talked wheel nuts and, and things like that? And are they shared with the authorities um, like Department for Transport, HSE, manufacturers and things like that? So um, right from the very beginning, we collected the back copy of every single trailer. As we said, it's actually posted to us. So we physically hold them. When they come in, they get checked. Um, the, the Tillies, when they're issued out, 
they the, all the numbers are logged out so we know exactly who's holding those certificates when they're then put onto a trailer they complete their journey we put them onto a database so we do hold a database of everything that's wrong with the trailer all the details of what was checked you know every single detail goes on there for our own use but we are able to share with the authorities um, if there was an incident and the authorities contacted us, which, which, they, which they do, and said, could you tell us has this trailer ever had a tilly? At that point, we could say yes or no. Right. We could share more details with them after we've asked permission from whoever inspected the trailer. So we would then go forward and speak to the mechanic or to the dealership and to say we've been asked to share and we want to share this information. Um, we do share percentages and we've been doing some work with the HSC here in um, England, talking about how we can make more of a effort to connect between the transport of the HSC and the agricultural side. Because um, I'm sure you're aware, the police are doing their bit, the HSC are doing their bit, but then you've got different departments. Often, often the police in, in England, it's the rural police that are in the position of stopping a trailer or attending a trailer when it's tipped over. Uh, and, you know, it's very much who's the ideal person to clear this load really quickly. And it's the farmer. And in reality, they should be looking at the trailer and wondering why this happened. It may be that a car cut it up and, it, you know, it's swerved, but it may also be that there, there are other issues. And um, I think we need to, to join together more there. So I think, yes, we do keep the details, Alan. Um, and we have got a very busy database. Uh, what's great though, we can also track the trailer. So when it comes back in, we've had a few trailers move about the country at auction and so on. People contacted us and said, we bought a trailer, it's got a tilly on. Um, you know, uh, we think it's out of date. It's not got any paperwork with it, but what can you tell us? And at that point, we can say yes or no. We can tell them different details. But equally, when they're sold, they could sell them with the um, the paper trail of their service history right from the start. So that, that that's some... Um, something we're working on, but it takes a few years to build, really. That's brilliant. Great. Thank you for that. Um, I've got another, um, I'm trying to get through as many of these questions that are coming in thick and oh, fast. <laughs> um, do you have any idea what percentage of farmers are part of the Tilly Pass? Oh, um, the amount of trailers we've done this year is 9,000. Okay. Um, I, I would, no one really knows how many trailers are actually sold in the country each year um it, i think it would be between six and eight thousand trailers new are going onto the market so um although it seems a tremendous amount of work we've done i think yeah. it's just the, tip of the iceberg that's brilliant um just for everyone who's on the webinar um you may have just seen that um a poll is about to be started um if you could answer the poll that's probably popped up, that would be fantastic. Um, the poll helps us by gathering feedback and allows us to change webinars in the future if that's what needs to be done. So your feedback is really vital. So if people could um, please answer the poll as we're going through, that would be brilliant. Um, and another question here. So, um, I've got people who are saying they're totally loving the app. Um, it could do wonders in the construction industry and that they've really been given food for thought, um, which is brilliant. Um, what the question is, is, is the app free to download for anyone? Absolutely everyone. Um, actually, we personally pay for it as a family. So although it belongs to the Tilly, we pay for the, um, for the use of Apple and Android on it. You don't have to be part of the Tilly. You can view it on the desktop at our, on our website where you can load the app um, very easily. If you hit our website on your handset, you can load it there for free at the top and it will be free forever. It will develop and it will start to um, move forward. Trailer manufacturers are um, looking to, you know, to, to sort of big it up and there's quite a competition at the minute to see who can get the next video out there. So it, it should all start to change by Christmas. That's great. Thank you. Um, we've had um, a question here about um, of the fact that the highway code is currently under review, including sections on vehicle maintenance and roadworthiness. And the question is, are you involved in inputting anything into the current consultation? Not with the highway code side of it, no. Okay. 
that was a quick one. <laughs> um, so um, we've also got a point here about um, the young farmers are tend to be really enthusiastic and interested in health and safety, but the older generations don't always show um, the same level of appreciation. How do you persuade and encourage more negative farmers? And I think this is something that... Um, most of the panel members may have had to deal with at some stage um but yeah anyone who wants to to have a go at that one um i will i think it's over to you again jane <laughs> Sorry, i don't want to step on anyone else's toes as they've got a really Sorry. good idea at this point um some of them you will never ever convince the ones mm. that i find the hardest are the ones that are so fiercely loyal to their employer that they actually will cover for them. So they're constantly saying, oh, you don't need to, we don't need to waste money on this. They're the ones that we're trying to safeguard at that point, the operators. Um, I think you just have to keep plodding on with it. And the younger people certainly are much better than, um, than the sort of the, the 40 plus bracket can be quite stubborn. Right. Um, no, that's brilliant. Um, so I just wanted to, um, say that there's 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 questions coming in thick and fast and we're getting them from all over the place there's england there's ireland there's wales there's they're, they're all coming in and i'm keep trying to scroll through and pick the ones the one that people have said is there any chance um of you asking and i've seen there's about four questions related to this and it's generally about could you give an indication of the cost of a tilly pass yeah. though the tilly registration and the certificate is 20 pounds so with that, you get your sticker, you get your um, you get your inspection sheet, and you get on the re the the register on the database, and we will then look to place you and help you in any way we can. The inspection takes two hours. They are removing your wheels, so the price is one hundred and sixty pounds. Obviously, if you need work on your trailer, that's something you then have to talk to the technician about. But they are coming out to your farm. Um, so we we don't undercut each other. So that is the bottom line. Um, some some come at £199, but that's the bigger dealerships. Um, we have a sprinkling of independents and dealerships throughout every area. So it's very simple to choose who you would like. Great. Quick one back on the app. We've had, um, and this is always fantastic to see, our international contingent online. Um, we've had a question is, will the app work in India? I think the, the app will work anywhere. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a little unsure. Um, <laughs> I presume it would, but you, you can log into the website and certainly view it. If you go on the Tilly Pass website, there's a head to toe page. So it actually works through the website as well as being independent on an app. So either way, you'll be able to access it. Fantastic. Um, and um, I think we'll just take one more quick question. Um, so we've got on here. Um, well, actually, rather than take a question, because I don't want to shortchange anyone with their answer, I would just like to say that the number of comments that have come in on Q&As and on chat about how fantastic your presentation was, Jane, and just how brilliant it is to, to see the work that you're doing, but also the photographs that you've been openly sharing with people, um, which are ser serving as a brilliant education tool. So a lot of... Um, thanks coming across to you from everyone that's on on the webinar um today and i think everybody um will agree that it, it's just brilliant to see this work um going forward and again our international um contingent coming on and just saying yeah excellent and a highly knowledgeable session i think we can say no more than that i think we've given everybody somewhat something to think about um i'm conscious that the time is is um getting on and drawing to a close so what I want to do um, if it's okay with everyone is just thank um, Jane very much for her presentation and also to all of the other panelists I'm sorry but Jane was the Jane was the highlight of the session and most of you um, didn't really get get a chance to get on there with the Q&A however having said that we do still have 19 questions in the Q&A um, box. So what we will be doing is 
answering those questions after the session and the answers will be will be put up on the IOSH um, site. Um, so we will be sending out a link to the presentation um, recording to the email address that people registered with. So please look out for your email. Um, look out for the presentation on the IOSH channel um, and we will get those questions and answers up as soon as we can. There will be links on the, the various IOSH groups. Um, thank you for a great collaboration this evening. Um, I think it just shows that all around the country we can get together and, and we all have the same passion and, and, and want to drive things like this forward. So again, my thanks to Jane and to the entire panel. If you haven't already finished your poll, can you please do so um, just to give us feedback and over to you, Jane, if you'd like to just give one final, final word before we wrap up the session. Oh, just to say thank you very much. It's been really enjoyable. And um, I'm sorry if I repeated myself, but <laughs> as I didn't have any notes, it's difficult. It's difficult to stop when you get onto trailers. But thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Um, and we will leave the session there. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. <laughs>